This is happening. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And the auto loan crisis is just beginning as repossessions are starting to surge. And I want you to be thinking as we go through the article today, how it's fixated on the consumer. This is the consumer's problem. They're the ones who took on all this debt. They're the ones who can't make the payment. They're the ones who are dealing with inflation. And that is where the story starts. What they are not talking about and what we will see in the months to come is how this is be going to become a problem for the banks. Now, a lot of people ask me, Steve, do you think the banks are going to make it through the financial crisis or the next one? And the answer is, I don't. And primarily the banks I think that are in trouble are your small, mid-sized banks, your credit unions, your community banks. And why is that? They're the ones who've done a ton of car loans. And when you start to put this in perspective, if as people start to get their cars repossessed, where are they going to go? They're gonna go back to the banks. And do the banks need to turn their parking lots into a showroom? Not at all. They're gonna find themselves with too many cars, they're gonna find themselves upside down, and they're gonna be in a position where they're desperate to unload them, and there aren't going to be any buyers. Let's over to NBC where we picked today's story up with a headline. Car repossessions are on the rise in a warning sign for the economy. A growing number of consumers are falling behind. Again, key point here, who's the blame? Consumers are falling behind on their car payments. A trend financial analysts fear will continue in a sign of the strange of soaring car prices and prolonged inflation are having on household budgets. Because what happens when inflation gets out of control and wages don't keep up with it, as we talked about on shows last week, what do people prioritize? Well, they prioritize their shelter, their rent, their house payment. They prioritize food, making sure they have food on the table. And last is energy, particularly as we head into the winter months now. We want to stay warm. We don't want to be cold. And transportation becomes fourth or fifth on the list because if you have a couple of cars and someone's out of work, well, they don't need a car. Or maybe one person drives the other to work and then goes to work. Maybe they use transportation. Maybe they get a ride with a friend. Maybe they borrow a family member's car. They figure out the problem. But remember, the big three are shelter, food, and energy, and that is why people are going to walk away from their car payments. And here you can see another reason people are struggling. Again, the the case is just, well, this is due to inflation, but look at the personal savings rate, as we've talked about on prior shows, is nearly at its all-time low of 2.3%. So people have less money out of their paychecks to save. We know they're drawing down their savings, and that makes it even more difficult to to make their car payments. And as far as their disposable income, I want you to notice how we're right back now. And this is not on a year-over-year rate of change. We'll look at that in a moment. But look at personal disposable income. You can see the pandemic money as it came out and drove incomes higher. But we're right back now to where it was just before the pandemic. But what's the big difference? is prices are higher, right? Rents are higher, food's higher, energy's higher, car payments are higher, everything's more expensive and people have less money. So when you think about this, I like to put it in perspective of a game of musical chairs. There are more players than there are chairs. At some point, the music stops and something has to give. In this case, I've been warning, I think the crisis starts with subprime autos and what we're starting to believe now is it is. And here you can look at real disposable income on a year-over-year rate of change. And what we would note and what we expect is it is negative, meaning people have less money than they had a year ago and their bills are even higher. Repossessions tumbled at the start of the pandemic when Americans got a boost from stimulus checks and lenders were more willing to accommodate those behind on their payments. And it made perfect sense. All this money was flowing around. Lenders wanted it. Car dealers wanted it. Auto manufacturers wanted it. And so what did they do? They extended credit. But I also want you to think back to the pandemic. And a lot of people, now maybe you weren't one of them, but a lot of people believed that once the government started these various forms of stimulus, they were going to continue them. So it didn't matter if they couldn't afford them under normal conditions, there would still be money coming in. And if that wasn't the case, they believed believe what policymakers told them is the economy was going to boom. They're going to get huge raises. And well, as we know, that didn't transpire either. 
But in recent months, the number of people behind on their car payments has been approaching pre-pandemic levels. And for the lowest income consumers, the rate of loan default is now exceeding where it was in 2019, according to ratings agency Fitch. And if we think about inflation and who it impacts the most, it's the poorest people, the ones who actually needed the vehicles to get to work. They had no choice. They had to pay the price. They didn't have the credit. They had to pay higher interest rates. And they're the ones that are bearing the brunt of this. And there's no surprise to see that they're the ones that are facing the highest delinquency rates and will likely have the highest default rates. And what this means is from a bank perspective, of course, we know banks don't like to lose money, but when, of course, we see delinquencies start to rise and defaults start to rise, what's the next stage is you see the net percentage of domestic banks tightening standards for auto loans. And when it's above the black line here, this horizontal line, it means they're starting to tighten. Now, this data only comes out quarterly, but you can see they're starting to tighten without any surprise. Industry analysts worry that the trend is only going to continue into 2023, with economists expecting unemployment to rise, inflation to remain relatively high, and household savings, as we've already shown, continuing to dwindle. At the same time, a growing number of consumers are having to stretch their budgets to afford a vehicle, as the average monthly payment for a new car is up a whopping 26% since 2019 to $718 a month, and nearly one in six, and this just blows me away, New car buyers are spending more than a thousand a month on a vehicle. Can you imagine that? I mean, a payment over a thousand dollars a month. I mean, I remember when people could buy a home and their payment was less than a thousand a month. You know, to think that they're buying a car with a payment over a thousand a month and how are they going to maintain that through the next recession will be rather impressive. And of course, it's not just the payment. We know that other costs are going up, including insurance, gas, and repairs. Now, the yesterday's show, I mentioned about my new report, uh, CTA Timer Pro. We hit the target of, of raising the price, but I've decided to extend it because I'm adding a whole new feature to the report. I want to show you real quick before we continue with the story. Right now, we, we look at here is how the machines are positioned, and this is a, a slower format of how they move. I'm going to add a whole new layer of a faster format, but what it does is shows how they're positioned currently, and then if they're buying or selling, if they're moving because you don't want to be on the wrong side of the machine. So here's the deal. For early adopters, it's still 20 bucks. When the programmer gets the new data all put together and I put up the a new guidebook on how to use it, price is going to 100. Link in the description below. Let's continue on. Those repossessions are occurring on people who could afford that five or $600 a month payment two years ago. And of course, due to the pandemic stimulus, they could afford even more, but that's changed because everything in their life is more expensive. That's where we're starting to see repossessions happen because just everything else is starting to pin you down. And again, this comes back to shelter, food, and energy. Well, if you've got an expensive car, well, maybe you don't need it. Maybe you've got an older car. Maybe you've got another car. Maybe you've got a friend or family member that's got a spare car that you can borrow. But making that big payment of a thousand plus a month, well, it doesn't work when you've got hungry kids and a roof you need to keep on your over your head. For those in the repossession business, well, there happens to be work. It's been difficult to keep up. And here we can see that with holidays approaching, they have demand or they lack the demand to hold all these cars. There just isn't enough space and not enough repo men to do it. In fact, this one has been particularly busy as people prioritize spending elsewhere and he's expecting business to keep up throughout next year in 2024, making me wonder if we'll start to see employment increases in the repo sector. But right now, it's a perfect storm. Over the last two years, vehicle prices were inflated because there was no new car supply. And people were still buying like crazy because they had a lot of stay-at-home cash. They had inflated credit scores. So it was a recipe for disaster, which we could have almost predicted and several people did last year. But something else that is going on that you're not seeing in the story is that people are going back to the dealerships and they're buying cars, even though they have one that they're going to stop making payments on or they've already stopped. And lenders usually don't like that. But now what they're saying is, look, I will lend against this 
new car because I'm hoping they keep the newer one and let the older one go and that other bank takes the hit and they'll keep our loan as good. We'll see how that works out for them. Just goes to show how desperate lenders are right now in hopes that their competition has too many bad loans and they end up failing but inventories for new cars are still way too low, which means prices are likely to stay elevated. As here we can see the auto inventory to sales ratio remains historically low, although maybe perhaps as our friend Jeff Snyder said on a Sunday show when we went to visit him, that perhaps in six months or so, that story will change in a big way. And at the same time, the number of repossession companies has shrunk by 30% as many firms closed up shop and the workers found jobs in under other industries when repossessions tumbled and during 2020. Lenders are now paying repo companies premiums to repossess their cars first in anticipation of a continued increase in loan defaults. And you kind of wonder why they would pay a premium. It's not just because there's fewer companies and fewer repossessors out doing their job, but don't worry, there will be more companies as demand goes up, and as people lose their jobs in other industries, they'll be back. Perhaps the real issue is they need to get this priority in the queue of repossessions because they need to flip that car back fast into the market. Because if you start to see prices of used cars tank, oh wait, we are, that means prices of other cars are coming down and these lenders are going to get stuck with them and they're already upside down, which means they're going to take a loss the question will be is how big of a loss it will be by the time they sell it. So they need to pay a premium, get the repossessors out, get that car back and get it sold before they get stuck with an even bigger headache. It's an issue that's raised concern among officials at the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau who say they're seeing troubling signs in the auto market, particularly among so-called subprime borrowers who have below average credit scores and those with loans taken out during 2021 and 2022 when auto prices were particularly high and banks, believe it or not, were gouging them on interest rates. If you know anybody or in the industry or someone who did have to buy a car with subprime credit, ask them what their interest rates were. It will shock you. But the story again, you notice the focus is all about the consumer. It's really about the banks. If the economy deteriorates, as many economists are predicting in 2023, the number of those falling behind on their car payments should continue to rise, even as consumers tend to give priority to their car payment and have most bills because of the importance a car plays in getting to work or potentially providing shelter, according to industry analysts. But guess what? If you don't have a job, you don't need a car. And I guarantee you this will go through people's mind. Look, I'm back on unemployment. I got to keep a roof over the head. I got to keep food in my kids' mouths, stomachs, and I've got to keep this place warm. Their prospects for a job are weak. I don't need a car right now. I just need a phone to call my buddies to find out when there is a job. And then maybe I'll get the wife or girlfriend to drop me off. I'll go in there and try to get a job or get a ride with my buddy when the opportunity exists. I guarantee you that's going to happen. They're not going to keep making these big car payments, particularly if car prices are coming down. Because if they're upside down, why would they keep making the payment when maybe they can just get another one? That near prime and subprime group of consumers are getting hit very, very hard by inflation. No surprise, that group of people did not have much disposable income. They had to finance a more expensive car than they got hit with prices going up overall, and it's just a lot of stress. And another risk to car buyers' finances is a growing length of auto loans, many of which now exceed seven years, if you can imagine. While those longer-term loans can lower monthly payments amid higher prices, Consumers risk paying off the loan much more slowly than the car is depreciating, leaving them underwater. Notice, again, leaving them underwater if they need to sell the vehicle. It can also mean higher interest costs over the life of the loan on top of already inflated vehicle prices. Look, my friends, this is a story about the banks. In a matter of months, sometime next year, you're starting to start to hear the banks are getting loaded up with used cars. They're upside down. Prices are collapsing and banks are going to hemorrhage because they've got too many of these, too many of them are going bad, and there's going to be too many people out of work that are going to look at their budget and say, why am I going to keep paying on this vehicle that I'm upside down on and losing money every month? And with that, I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now.